Rejoice, a new and wondrous era has begun, an age of beauty, of fulfillment, of ecstasy, an awakening of the eagerness of old, wherein a magic pulse beats out the message of the universe. Hear, sense, feel, embrace with all your being and so all seen, attune to the awakening. I'm Gordon Anderson from Real Gone Music. You've just been listening to the first track from the Hear, Sense, and Feel album by The Awakening, one of four records that Real Gone Music will be putting out from the Black Jazz label in late August. What is Black Jazz? Well, these days it's more a legend than a label. Founded by Dick Shorey of Ovation Records and jazz pianist and composer Gene Russell, the label only lasted about four years due to bad distribution and weird marketing decisions like this one, this is actually the record you're hearing right now, Gene Russell's New Direction, the first record that the label put out. And in their infinite marketing wisdom, they decided to put the front cover on the back cover upside down, thinking that it'd be easier to see in the record bins. Didn't work. The label only lasted four years and put out about 20 records. But since then, a new generation of crate diggers, DJs, and jazz collectors have discovered black jazz to the point where it's arguably the most collectible label in all of jazz today. Why? Well, the mixture of soul jazz, free jazz, and modal jazz, all imbued with a black power vibe, sounds ever so contemporary today, and certainly the message hits home today too. At Real Gone Music, we tried to track down the rights to this label for years. And here to tell you more about that is my co-producer on the reissue series, the jazz detective himself, Zeph Feldman. Gordon and I in 2017 set off on this path together to try to find who owned Black Jazz. How could we go about obtaining the licensing to issue these recordings? And sometime uh, that year, I first spoke with a dear colleague of mine for many years, David Rondan of Distri Jazz in Barcelona, Spain. David Rondan gave me this information for a gentleman that we just knew as James H. As the proprietor who had acquired the rights, as we knew it, to the Black Jazz label. Uh, at first I had a telephone number and it was very exciting at first. Gordon and I had a conference call with James and he was very interested in collaborating with us and we were very excited about the prospects. Um, but. The path eventually went cold. We kept calling and calling, and after all that, it turns out James H. didn't own the label anyway. I discovered this when Anton DeSantis, a longtime colleague of mine, revealed to me that a company he was working for, 43 North, had bought the rights to black jazz from Dick Shorey, who had founded Ovation Records and with whom jazz pianist Gene Russell had started the black jazz label with back in the early 70s summer of 2019, we initiated this dialogue with 43 North on putting out these recordings legally and officially on Real Gone Music. What made the Black Jazz label deserving of such a special reissue series of this is simply put, the music is wonderful. Uh, Walter Bishop Jr., Henry the Skipper Franklin, and especially Doug and Gene Kern, just incredible jazz from this period of the early 1970s. I think given the cultural climate in this country right now, this is a very special time for us to be celebrating this label and its rich roots. It's a pleasure and honor to be able to collaborate with my esteemed colleague, the great author and producer, Pat Thomas, to talk about this rich history and this record label. I get ready to dive in, to learn, uh, and to enjoy this incredible music. I'm Pat Thomas, author of Listen Whitey, The Sights and Sounds of Black Power, and I'm doing liner notes for every black jazz reissue, uh, putting the black jazz label into a cultural context with other interesting uh, labels and organizations that were happening at that time. For example, Horace Tapscott in, in, in Watts in Los Angeles had established the Union of God's Musicians and Artists Ascension 
In Detroit, you had Wendell Harrison and Phil Ramlin, who formed a collective known as The Tribe. Brooklyn had the CBA, Collective Black Artists Association, with Reggie Workman, Donald Byrd, and the founder of the Strata East record label, Stanley Cowell, a very similar label to Black Jazz. And of course, in Chicago, the most influential organization, the Association for the Advancement of Creative, Creative Musicians, the AACM, which brought the world the Art Ensemble of Chicago, Henry Threadgill, uh, Richard Abrams, and a lot of other incredible uh, musicians and artists. And so it's uh, really important to see Black Jazz, uh, which was based in Oakland and, uh, and also did some recording in Los Angeles, uh, a West Coast version of these other organizations that were happening uh, across America, Detroit, Brooklyn, Chicago, and of course, Horace Tapscott, also here in LA. And so with each set of liner notes, I dig deep into uh, the cultural uh, scene of the time, as well as try to find nuggets of information and uh, even talk to some of the musicians. I did a really great interview with Doug Karn, and I hope you enjoy this series. On August 28th, Real Gone Music will be releasing three albums from the Black Jazz label on CD and vinyl. The Awakening, Hear, Sense, and Feel, Walter Bishop Jr., Coral Keys, and Doug Karn, featuring the voice of Gene Karn, Spirit of the New Land, followed by the release the next day of Gene Russell, New Direction, on the first RSD drop. Each album will be remastered by Mike Milchner at Sonic Vision, and each LP will be pressed in black vinyl by Gotta Groove Records. Succeeding months will see releases from Kelly Patterson, Roland Haynes, and the late Cleveland Eaton, as Real Gone Music continues to explore the Black Jazz catalog, and the release of each album will be accompanied by a donation of $500 by Real Gone Music to the Equal Justice Initiative. We must have us some land, I hope for the day that you understand. We must have us some land, I hope for the day that you understand. Power to the people, power to all the people, we must use our power to make 